Hi there, welcome to the latest episode of my 10 minute moan and the uh, topic of this 10 minute moan is Labour, make, Scottish Labour, making a move to destabilise the government and hold them to task on the housing crisis that we have. And this story is uh, led by the Herald uh, today. Labour to make a new attempt to declare housing emergency, which doesn't sound like the most exciting thing, but it could have a lot of ramifications. Um, Scottish Labour will this week make a new attempt to declare a housing, national housing emergency. The party will use its debating time on Wednesday to push the SNP government to acknowledge the extent of the crisis in the housing across the country. A number of local authorities, including the two biggest in Glasgow and Edinburgh, have already made such a declaration in the face of increasing homelessness figures and a lack of supply. The party has also urged the Scottish Greens to back them after having voted against a similar attempt while the party was a part of the Scottish Government. This is exactly what the stuff that um, could actually really haunt the SNP. Things that the, um, the Greens previously, when they were in government with them, backed the, the government in a vote. There's no guaranteed anymore. So this is quite a nice move by Labour. Not only is it the right thing to do, I think it's a clever thing to do. Um, the vote could be the first John Swinney faces losing since taking over the reins of the Scottish Government if the Greens and the rest of the opposition parties decided to back Labour. Speaking ahead of the debate, Labour housing spokesman Mark Griffin said, there is no doubt Scotland was in the grips of a housing emergency. Can you disagree with that, Mark? The SNP government has not only ignored this crisis, but actively fanned its flames with its brutal cuts in the housing budget. Tackling this housing emergency is key to dealing with the cost of living crisis and driving down poverty. The SNP cannot remain in denial about the scale of the, this emergency. The Greens have an opportunity to hold the SNP government to account for a litany of failures in housing, including plans to tear up the Butte House Agreement Affordable Housing Pledge. I urge, oh now, rewind a wee bit. Swinney has already threatened the SNP not to water down any of the policies that they agreed when they were part of the government with the Butte House Agreement. So, this fact that they're, you know, they're already taking money out of a budget that was agreed for uh, housing should enrage the Greens. And if they don't vote in favour of this, then they're total um, hypocrites. In one of his last acts, First Minister Yusuf, Mr Swinney's predecessor, announced an extra £80 million for affordable housing over the next two years. Remember that, but that was just a farce. The funding was announced, this is a key bit, by Mr Yusuf on a visit to the Hillcrest Housing Association's Derby Street development in Dundee just days before his resignation last month and was designed to help organise purchase organisations purchase empty houses for social housing. Now, th this was on Friday, I believe, when he was due at a university in Glasgow to have a chat about whatever he was having a chat about. Last minute, bump, no doing it. He was under a bit of pressure, remaining in power, and suddenly called a press conference with Art Hat and High Viz on. Started to talk absolute nonsense about what he was going to do as First Minister. It was a knee jerk reaction. It was like the one where the, the um, conference, SNP conference, he made a knee jerk reaction to get up on stage and go, I'm freezing council tax. Right? Just nonsense. Just not thought out, ill thought out, and just there to try and save face and build a bit of spin from. That was what he done with this. Now, at the time, this is a good comment, Scottish Federation of Housing Associations said the government's record in housing had been under intense scrutiny in recent months following a £196 million cut to the country's affordable housing budget. So, when they cut it, we call it 200, grand, eh, 200 million. Then, a wee bit later, announce it's putting 80 million pound in. No, you're not. You're, instead of cutting them by 200 million, you're only cutting them by 120 million now, right? It's just wooden dollars. It's, it's their money that you're giving them back, So, but you're still a net of uh, minus 120 million. 
And anybody that fell for it that Friday needed a slap in the head. Uh, there was another good comment here. SFHA Chief Executive Sally Thomas said that while any new funding was welcome, the new funding would not address the core issues of needing to build new homes uh, at scale. For months, we've repeatedly called on government to reverse the huge £200 million cut to affordable housing programme. So I'm pleased to see the First Minister at least consider the issue of housing. Figures published last month point to the lowest number of homes built by housing associations last year than in any previous point since 1988. What's that, 30, 30 40 years? Right? So this SNP government, that we've known very well we've been in a house um, shortage for a long time, are affecting it in a negative way. We're building less houses if our housing associations granted than we did 30, 40 years. It's just insane that, but this is, this is just another byproduct of the lunacy of free stuff, right? Because free stuff needs paid for. Free prescriptions, about one, one, one about billion pounds for memory that's costing um, the public purse. And people look at me, I went quite happily. The old way of prescriptions, if you could afford to pay for your prescription, you paid whatever. I think English ones are nine or ten quid right now, right? It's hardly life threatening for the majority of working people. If you're ill and you can get all your drugs you want for nine or ten quid, it's no biggie, right? And if you couldn't afford because you're on benefits, etc., you always get free prescriptions. But this thing about, oh, here we go. You know, we're giving everybody um, free prescriptions. It's a bribe, right? It's utter nonsense. And when you do that, it costs the public purse. So either things have got to give or we just keep putting taxes up, right? So things that have got to give, like housing, get affected. The NHS gets affected. Policing gets affected. Everything else that you, you need to spend money on as a, as a government is affected when you do stupid things like change a system for pre-prescriptions that actually worked before, right? And this is it. This is it. This is the um, the reaction to it. And it, these people just don't get. They've been bribing the Scottish electorate for years, and you know, given what they offer, you get more free stuff, more than a more vote. Oh, aye, but you're completely um, oblivious to the fact that. Nothing is free. There is a cost attached to everything apart from fresh air. But that's only because they've not figured out a way to tax it yet, right? <coughs> I am, excuse me. So, these idiotic things that the SNP have been doing as vote winners for decades really need looked at. And it, the Scottish public would need to, to sort this, the Scottish public would need to really just understand What's going on for the last 17 years with these bribes? And just get a, you know, a reality check and say, because of this, this, this and this are poorer. And because of that, we need to put taxes up, we need to do this, we need to... It's just total fabrication of reality to think that the world can give everybody things free, right? Because the more people that get stuff free, and the less people are working, and I'm not even going to the um, skill shortage nonsense that, that could be easy fixed again with a bit of a reality check, but politicians don't really worry about reality checks because all they tend to do is get voted in in promises and just do enough that in five years' time the electorate will still vote them in. And normally that isn't really down to the MP or the, SM, the MSP's actions in the five years, normally that's just down to their party, whatever rosette colour they've got on. If they've done well, people will vote them back in. If the party haven't done well, they'll potentially lose their jobs. Right, and it's utter nonsense because they're not really interested when they're in their wee cushy number about long-term stuff because they might not be here to, for them to see any benefit of it. And that's why I'm, I'm convinced the SNP targets, a lot of them are away up there. 2030, 2035, 2040. What does it matter? 
You're not going to be here. Even if your party were still in power 15 years from now, which I doubt they'll be in 15 months from now, but let's just suggest they were. None of the people that are in the MSPs they know are going to still be there to face the consequences, so they just talk utter nonsense. This country needs a reality check. We need people in Parliament to say, stop the bus, here's some tough facts. We're skint, right? We've had clowns for 17 years, blow the door, right? And blame everybody else, okay? For some reason, during the world economic crisis, the Scottish Government think there's a money tree in Westminster and they should get more of it just because, right? And, 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 and recessions and stuff, they believe would, you know, be immune. Scotland would be immune to them in an independent country for some reason. Right? They're just bonkers, right? When we went into lockdown, cost countries all over the world. Absolute farce. Billions of pounds. But Scottish nationalist cult members think Scotland don't, they shouldn't need to pay that back. That's the UK debt. You're, they're absolutely bonkers, right? And what we need is a reality check. Somebody brave enough, or a group of people brave enough, to stand in Holyrood and say, the boss bust, right? But here's some proper things that we're going to do to fix it, right? Now, we're going to try and stop hurting people by telling folk nonsense that all oh, this is free. We need to review even bus passes, right? What, what is the true cost to that and who's paying it? Prescriptions, what is the true cost to the NHS and who's paying it, right? Even education, the, 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 this, the, the, you know, this utopia of everybody gets a free university place is total bollocks because what happened there, the reality of that is they had to cap the amount of Scottish kids in Scottish universities. Do you know that? Right? And then it became a postcode lottery. Because they wanted and they said that they were going to close the attainment gap, the easiest way to do that was put more kids from the private areas into universities. That helps your figures, right? No, nobody educating them more at their schools in those postcodes and, you know, try to change the mindset to let's get up off our ass and do something, right? That, that, that obviously alienated them. So what they'd done was they capped the amount of Scottish kids that could go to universities, thereby it's no unlimited, so, you know, they can control the, 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 the actual cost of the thing. And then to help the attainment gap, if you were in a certain postcode, it was easier for you to get in than if you were in a different postcode. So middle and upper class kids were actually, you know, the ones that actually would have paid for the bloody university 10, 20 years ago, when that process that worked quite well was, you know, abolished. They, it's harder for them actually to get into university places now. And I'm not saying that people in other areas shouldn't get education. Of course they should. My son's school was not in a great postcode and he went to university. And I'm delighted for him, and it was a great thing. However, you could have done so in the old method as well, and probably been free, because there was bursaries and things like that, right? And then we wouldn't need to cap the amount of Scottish kids going into Scottish universities. What you maybe we need to cap would be the amount of free places, which makes sense, because you're in fact doing that just now. So it's all just total nonsense, right? It is smoke and mirrors, it is snake oil sales, right? It's like, here's something lovely job play. Kids of Evo, all right, ah, that sounds great. Oh, it does sound great. Of course it sounds great. Until you actually look at it. And they're all a pure, proper farce. So, get rid of this SNP. Let's bury them financially, right? They'll, they'll be bankrupt if they don't win loads of seats at Westminster and Holyrood, right? And hopefully they would finish them because they're bonkers. And the reality has got to be told. The Scottish people need to be told, see, for the last 17 years, they've bankrupted us. And it's not going to be an easy journey out of it. But here's some things that we're going to do to make the country better and control the amount we spend and thereby control the amount that we need to bring in. And we don't just need to keep horsing taxes up. Right? Reality check. Tell you what else would be brilliant. See if we had whether it be Scottish at Holyrood level or, or local level, people actually go in and look at every single contract we have as a nation, right? You know, public um, concerns, contracts. Because I've been involved. I've, I worked in London for a while as a, a sales director for an industrial cleaning company. And I seen what went on. 
It's frightening. Businesses tend to have two different levels of charging. One for normal folk and one for councils or, or parliament or government. Right? And they're quite different. Because there's no controls. Because we don't run it like we should. We don't want councils, we don't want run Holyrood like a business. And if we did, we wouldn't be throwing so much money out of it. We could save, I reckon, hundreds of millions a year by being more businesslike in our parliament. And I, and I hope, fingers crossed, maybe I'm just being nuts, right, that someday, soon, we can have proper people doing some proper things in Holyrood. And if not, ban it, because we don't need it. Anyway, if you liked the video, give me a thumbs up. If um, <clears throat> you um, want to subscribe, that'd be great. But most importantly of all, unless you're one of these nutcases that bring out all these free things that cost the country an absolute fortune, and, and just make folk like, you know, bus companies richer. That's, that's, that's fantastic. See you, unless you're these people, everybody else have a great day. Cheerio, bye now.